Hello, and welcome back. This is the Halo After Show. This is Sean. And this is Chris. Man, you started with that again. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to do it every week. If I'm here, I'll do it. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't here last week. I got the COVID. Chris was very um, elusive last week about what was going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sick. I called in sick that day. That's all. Uh, but we're here to discuss episode three of Halo, which uh, the title was Emergence. Emergence. Um, which I, it's kind of tough for me to not say emergency. I, I don't say the word emergence in my daily life very much. Yeah, nope, that's not one I use either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about it. So let's just do this. First first impressions. What, what were your first impressions of this episode? Um, I was a little bit more engaged with this episode this week than last week, I think. Um, I don't know what it was. I guess maybe it was just the introduction of Cortana. It's been something I've been waiting on. Like, I know she's a pretty important character in the whole Halo universe. Yeah. And she's actually the one thing that I'm most familiar with out of Halo, just because she's the Windows operating system, you know, AI that you're always having to <laughs> shut off when you install Windows. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, this one here, honestly, for me, this one I was least engaged with. Now, that was the first time through i watched it a second time and the second time i i enjoyed it more the second time around when i was kind of uh watching a little more intently when i was taking the notes here for us yeah uh i called a few things that i didn't catch the first time which i thought were pretty cool uh but as a whole honestly i, I think i'd probably put this one the bottom of the three episodes so far in my really opinion. yeah yeah a lot happened this episode but a lot happened around john and like around master chief but not really necessarily he wasn't really a driving force through a lot of it. Uh, it was very Cortana heavy, very kind of Halsey heavy. Yeah, very much um, so. So maybe maybe that's what the difference was. But um, I think first up, we should probably just go around character by character. Um, you know, I mean, what character the e easiest way to do it. Seeing that it's so dense and there's, like, there's yeah. so many different kind of storylines. And it does have a, uh, a tendency to kind of jump around, mm -hmm. you know, from one area to another, just kind of. All over the place. So if we have break it down by character here, well, we've got the Blessed One or Makey or Mackey. I don't know. They don't really say her name very often. No. Um, and, and as far as I know, she's actually new to the Halo, you know, world. Yeah, she's show. made for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of her character though. We get an opening scene that's her backstory. Uh, we get more development as far as her leaving the Covenant and you know starting her mission to to find this this key. Um, what, what's the item called? Uh, the keystone. The keystone. That's right. The keystone. Yeah. That's what she's been calling it. Yeah. So what do you think of this opening? The kind of opening on a, on a junkyard planet. It reminded me of that one that Cal Kestis was on and yeah. uh, Jedi fallen order. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it basically refers back to what, well, we didn't know until this point, but there is some type of slavery that's taken place yeah. uh, within this, the halo universe. And that's pretty much what was happening here with these two kids that were just kind of hiding uh, reading a book. That's all they were doing. They were reading a book. They weren't collecting plastics and all them and making sure their baskets, you know, their bags were perfect. Yeah. Uh, Might have been their off time. You could tell they probably were a part of that manual labor, but maybe they were just, you know, during their uh, their required sleep time or something. But yeah, they were under heavy rule. I mean, guards yelling the entire time, abusing them. It was not a pleasant. Oh, uh, yeah. Hitting, experience. shocking. I mean, there was, I mean, yeah, it was, it was an iron fist. I mean, it's pretty yeah. much what was happening there. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're reading, they're reading the book. There's this whole, like, once you read the word kiss and things happening and right. Uh, that, that kind of creeped me out a little bit. I was like, come on. Well, first I thought maybe I assumed they were like brother and sister, but then once, I mean, the kiss thing happened, I was like, well, maybe they're just kids coming of age that happen to know each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't, yeah. don't know age wise or what's really happening here. And then they get spotted and then they're kind of like running and kind of doing their own thing. But there was that, that book. Right, that, that book they were they're reading, reading from. That there, there's going to be, I, I really think there's more significance to this book. Because it yeah. was the same one we've seen her reading when uh, when Mercy came in. When we've seen her for the first time, that she he told her to put the book down and not bring it with him. Uh, we see her with this book again here in this episode. Uh, so it, there, there's something to that book. She's, I, I must feel like she's holding on to her, her, her humanity yeah. more than she's actually leading on. 
Yeah, I think that's what that book represents for sure. I mean, we don't know the content to the book per se, if there's anything more meaningful than just kind of a story. But she definitely associates that book with her time still being human, you know, the time before the covenant picks her up. Yeah. But and, man, she's got she got a set on her because when the covenant showed up and the and uh the elites were kind of looking for something, they find out it was her. Yeah. She basically stands up, throws her hood on, grabs that book, and she looks up to the ship and she's like, Let's bounce. Yeah, she's like, Let's do this thing. I'm like, What uh, I there would nope. I would have done dropped the load in my pants, I would have curled up in a fetal position. Like, I'm not going with you. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could tell her life isn't very pleasant. So it's like, I mean, you know, out of the frying pan into the fire kind of the way, like, you know, six of one, half a dozen the other. Maybe she's probably thinking like it can't be any worse than what I live through day to day. Or, anyway. or this is my this, this is my way off this rock. Right. I'll find if it's, if it's bad up there, too. I'll find a way off there as well, because I found a way off out of this situation. Yeah. And in all honesty, I mean, the, the kind of life that it seems like the covenant has given her. I mean, she's well fed. She looks to be taken care of. Um, the covenant that interact with her and talk to her, uh, you know, I don't know what it was like for her as a child, but I mean, they seem to respect her and talk to her in a way that's respectful. So they it's like, respect her because she can activate the keystone. Right. Yeah. That, that that's the bottom line. Just like we found out last week with a uh, uh, rake or rask or whatever his name was, he couldn't activate it. Right. So he wasn't a blessed one. So he was able to go ahead and move on. Yeah. Um, but it's it's tough to say. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're only treating her nice because of her importance. Um, yeah, we've got a quick Chris here is asking if the guards were UNSC. I don't think so. I didn't I didn't catch any branding. It's almost like it was like an individual government running that say that that junkyard that's the only thing i was able to get from it oh that's funny because i had assumed that they were unsc i don't i don't know if i remember seeing the logo anywhere but it's just in my head canon like if any any place in a position of power where these people are kind of over over these other people i i think in my head i just kind of assumed they were unsc well i just want well, i the only reason i think the way i think is because when you go ahead and connect what's happening on madrigal right now there's yeah. a governor of that planet that's controlling everything that's working working in step with the UNSC, right, but they're not true. specifically UNSC. Yeah. And th um, that's why I think there were just individual, like whoever's running it. Yeah. Um, then we see her in present day. She's on the covenant ship. Uh, she's basically, you know, getting ready to go. She's like, how do I look? Do I look human enough? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, she's still got her book with her. And um, I guess ultimately the plan, she says she's going to go to Madrigal, uh, but before she does, she d runs this little diversion uh, where she's in one of the Covenant ships. They kind of like fall out of hyperspace or whatever the yeah. term is, the Halo term uh, is, right? Uh, slip space. Slip space. Okay, there you go. There yeah, it's go. an education last week with Christopher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, our, our resident Halo head. That's right. Um, but she falls, you know, she pulls a di diversion, pretty, pretty tricksy. She pretends to be a, a distressed, uh, human being that just happens to be alone on, and escaped on the ship. And it was pretty convincing, you know, her story. Yeah. All see, I like this though, too, because it showed two things. It showed, even though the, the UNSC ship, uh, what, what was the name of the ship here? Uh, the Gladius, uh, the Gladius 23, uh, was tricked into bringing her on. I like the protocols they had in place. They locked right. that ship down. There was nothing that she can get from the ship. And the captain was like, you know, you got us. We're all dead, but you got a rock now. There's nothing here that you can do anything with. Right. Yeah. Which was smart. I, I don't know. Uh, it seems as though the, these wiggly worms that were like spreading throughout the ship. I don't know if that was something they haven't seen before, or maybe that's exactly why they had this protocol. Well, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was weird. Cause when she finally, when she was making that distress, distress call and they showed her, mm -hmm. there was some type of character that was standing up in the back and you see those worms kind of go up in their, in the armor and their leg. Right. And then you knew something. I mean, you knew something was up in the get go. She wasn't just going to go ahead and get on the ship, but I almost thought there was a point where she may get on the ship and let them take her where they were going to go and then you know the covenant would be kind of been tailing them right yeah that would have been smart i i get well you know 
either way, it's what this scene did. I, I think it, it shows um, how dangerous she is. Yes. Because so far we've only really seen her as kind of a religious zealot. And uh, but, you know, her working in conjunction with this alien force, uh, it's dangerous because, you know, she can get by where these covenant can't because of the way she looks. Yeah, she can walk among us. She's the wolf amongst us. Right. Um, so it definitely did its job as far as upping the the threat level when it comes to her character, which I thought it was it was pretty effective. Yeah, because we know she's dangerous, but we don't know why she's dangerous or how powerful right. she actually is. Yeah. And if there's multiple people that can actually go ahead and activate this keystone, why are they so attached to her? Right. Like why 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 there, there's gotta be more behind it rather than just her being able to activate uh the keystone itself. And she's a direct threat to Master Chief. I mean, before she leaves the Covenant, she promises that she's going to bring the demon's head yeah. back to them. Um, which means that, uh, you know, uh, the, the Keystone is part of her mission, but another part of it is uh she, Yeah, she's going to kill, kill Master, Master Chief. Chief. Yeah. Now, she did say something, and this is, uh, we were looking at uh, something that I caught the second time around. But she mentioned the ring. Mm. So the Keystone and the ring. Right. So... Like one ring yeah so i'm, I'm wondering because we're, we're we're learning more about master chief we're learning how much about what he's seen and i wonder i mean it's it's gonna be a conversation we're having later about around master chief but i wonder if that thing that he was drawing he thinks he buried is the ring that she's speaking of i what i took and from what christopher mentioned last week is that the ring is the halo the ring is this thing that's in the middle of our screen here dividing us in our background whatever this ring is whatever this it's still kind of a mystery to us what the heck halo even is right yeah um so that's that's what i i took it as and there there are multiple halos just like there's multiple halo games <laughs> halo 2 <laughs> halo 3 there we go but uh i mean and i mean we see her get on the ship we see her go through kill the in the entirety of the crew yeah, uh, the captain was the last one. The captain was pretty much, you know, I'm going down with the ship. It gave her nothing, and she try. I mean, she tries to tap into it. We see her go ahead. And she's like within like the internals of it, plugs into it, goes to the main screen, and basically says, "There's nothing there." And yeah, the only thing she does left is just patches into communications. Uh, you know, opens up comms back to the Covenant, letting them know that there's basically nothing that she could get from the ship and that she's on her way to Madrigal now. Yeah, let's let's move on to Madrigal. And yeah. and that that's essentially the the entirety of her her story arc in this episode. Now we got a lot of it. Uh is this storyline even interesting to you? What as far as her I yeah, this episode did more with this character than, you know, the past two episodes combined. Oh yeah, yeah. Before it's just, you know, her and the Covenant and how important she is and her you know there wasn't much going on it was just kind of an introduction but now she's you know she's taking action she's making moves she's going places so yeah i thought it was pretty interesting i'm curious i mean i'm not completely sucked into the storyline yet uh i'm yeah you know, i mean like curious is probably the best way to put it for me yeah. i want to see her actually i want to know what if she has any powers herself well, from here, I think it's it's going to be interesting now that we know that she's on her way to Madrigal. We know that uh, Soren and uh, Quan Ha are also on their way back to Madrigal. Yeah. And we have a convergence of characters here, which I think is always interesting. When you have separate characters, uh, we ran into this with the Invasion show, how yeah. the characters were so separate the whole time. And they and never really came together. Just, yeah, yeah, only, only a few of them ever did. Um, but a lot of those plot lines stayed separate. So, you know, to have a convergence of some characters that we know, you know, since the first episode, um, destined to kind of, you, you know, they're not going to like miss each other. If they're both going. To oh, yeah, they're role, going. Gonna and they're probably going to wind up. I, I would almost believe Quan's going to try to go back to the caves where they yeah. found, you know, the first keystone. That is exactly where uh, Makey is going to wind up going as well, because that's where she told them to go ahead and mine to find it. Yeah. So. Yeah, there, there's going to be a coming together uh, to that point. Uh, I believe we're going to see. I think we're going to see everyone in Madrigal at no, some you point. Think eventually, like uh, Halsey and uh, Master Chief, and just everybody. Yeah, I think there's going to be Madrigal. a convergence of everyone on Madrigal, and that's that's where uh, the main conflict I think is going to take place. Mm. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be a, a budget friendly way of doing it too. 
just uh, yeah. empty sands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of the Tatooine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm on board. I mean, I don't dislike it, but I'm like, okay, I, I want some more. Okay, well, they find the sacred ring. That, that was the, what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we kind of already talked about that a little bit, but. Well, I mean, speaking of uh, Quan and Soren, we kind of mentioned them. Uh, Quan is staying with Soren at his place, his family's abode. Um, and all she is, she keeps seeing these news reports of this uh, this general guy over in Madrigal who's like, you know, you could tell he's abusing people and just. Uh, well, he's pretty much killed everybody that was, uh, you know, uh, loyal to her father. Right. Every, everyone's dead i mean and she's irritated about that so she wants to go you know exact some revenge on him right and she's you know she's young and she's motivated and it's she like called this sword is... an asshole she i mean face, if it yeah. if it wasn't for master chief she would have been dead right i mean I, so do you think I, her little um claim that she's she's rich and if he does bring her back then he'll get paid you think that's a bluff that's a complete bluff. It's got to be a bluff, right? I don't buy any of it. Yeah, I, I don't buy that. Uh, and I don't think he's going to sell her back either. No, because I think, I think I something think something's going to wind up happening. Or he may, or he may, she may wind up in custody of the new governor there, and that's when all of a sudden we see Master Chief return. If he does, I think it's going to be part of a larger scheme. It's going to be a bit of a Lando Calrissian move. I don't see him being that that dirty of a character to to do john dirty like that he did make a promise i don't see him yeah, that, yeah that's on the it. one thing he's holding to yeah he said he made a promise to john that i'll, I'll keep you safe you'll know, see i'll see you at home for dinner we're having chicken <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um do you think we'll see soren's family again or are we pretty much gone from this uh this asteroid planet for the rest of the uh, season i hope not i i like Cass. i like his son his wife seems very like knowledgeable like she knows yeah. she's she, she's dropped a lot of knowledge on a on, on Quan the whole time she's been there between like uh saying basically the universe will be less without you if you die. Yeah, I did. Uh, you may, you mentioned that I actually like that scene between them a lot is she's trying to convince Quan to like lay off this mission of hers because she's been there. Her planet's been destroyed before she was coming from a place of knowledge. Um, But at the end of the day, she's like, you can kind of tell like it's it's. It's tough. It's a tough sell to to try to dissuade somebody. Well, who's well, that? like, I can't sit back and smoke and eat and pretend things didn't happen. Right. Yeah. She's she she's a she came from a family of action. Yeah. And that's what she's leaning on. That's all she knows. She knows she has that fight. She doesn't have flight. She's all fight. So she right. wants to get back and she's going to push any button she can. She's trying to steal sword and ship. He's right. like you. You could be dead now too. He's like yeah. you know you're 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 doing a lot here that uh, I would kill a lot of people for. <laughs> she really pushed it this episode. She did, yeah. But uh, there, that's pretty much uh, the bulk of it. Is that you know she finally convinced Soren to go through this bluff lie. I don't know. We'll we'll see as far as money. Well, he yeah. He's like I don't care either way. Yeah. I'm getting paid. Um, but uh, they're they're heading to Madrigal, so we'll see what comes of that hopefully the next episode i hope they don't they don't delay it too much because right now in this episode we have a promise right we have a promise that these separate characters coming from separate locations are heading to the same location yeah and i want to see you know the blessed one and soren and uh kwan ha interact i want to see soren in action yeah i do just too. doesn't forget how to fight everyone on that rock respects him for a reason Something right. took place when he was there mm-hmm. that basically made him the head dog on that rock. Yeah, they listened to him. Yeah. And so I want to see him in action. So, so if he shows up and also what if he's fighting side by side with Master Chief all these years later? They're fighting side cool. by side. That would be very cool. Yeah, it would be uh, kind of a nice payoff from their introduction to when they were younger and, and uh, uh, Soren escaped. But there will be one com- side one, side. one issue to that. Halsey will be there. Mm, and Halsey true. would recognize him as, you know, one of the defectors that got away. Right. So, I mean, I don't know that that's that. Whole... I can never tell what Halsey's going to do, though. Like, she's not exactly the character to play by the rules and go by the book. No, she's I don't know if we're going to see her back on on reach. 
I think the yeah. only reason we'll see her back on Reach is if she's going back to try to get the the, the Keystone off Reach. We'll talk about Halsey. I think um, we should probably talk about the bulk of the episode now with, with let's, John. Let's and do this real quick. If, if you guys are watching us, we're about 20 minutes in. Uh, thanks for watching us. Uh, if you are a Halo head and you're listening to us, you know, butcher everything about the series and everything. Right. Uh, let us know. Drop a comment. Uh, we bring up comments live. So if you're watching live, by all means, interact. Uh, but bare us. minimum, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You know what? Share it. Let other people know that we don't know what we're talking about either. So <laughs> See, look at these jerks. They don't know what the heck Halo is. They're ruining our series. Or, or these two non-Halo heads are enjoying the show because they don't know anything about it. Uh, however you want to look at it. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's continuous. That, that's, let's jump into the whole John dr holsey and cortana type uh situation we got going on yeah so we get confirmation this week I, they kind of danced around in the first couple episodes what this clone is right this clone that's been sitting in a pod um halsey has a direct conversation with this clone and it's, and it's definitely a clone of halsey i mean you can yeah tell it's, it's pretty much just uh halsey with perfect skin and no hair <laughs> yeah it's kind of creepy looking <laughs> yeah it is a little creepy they maybe did it's some the... cg thing i think yeah. to make it look unsettling but yeah, I mean, she's sitting there and they start asking questions. Yeah. She starts asking questions about the others, the, the kids. I'm like, what kids? And basically, there's a, a percentage of them that died. She's like, I thought that that's higher than others. And then she says, well, the other 35 became Spartans. And that was a question I asked Chris last week. Like, How many Spartans are there? Mm -hmm. We only see four. What happened to the rest of them? Are there more? The way that the planets are reacting and the way that the generals are acting is as if, you know, we only have four Spartans, and they're right. the lead of our military. So, what happened to the other thirty-one? I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, hopefully, we get some more of the the four Spartans that we know. So far, they've kind of not done too much in these episodes. Um, a little bit, we'll talk about a little bit later. But um, yeah, so they go through this this process, this procedure, where it seems as though basically they they sacrifice this clone body. So they can kind of keep the AI, keep the consciousness, keep the smarts, <laughs> the brain. Yeah. Dude, I couldn't um, watch that scene. I oh, had to the close my to eyes. The, the, the yeah. needle to the eye. And basically when it showed like the mapping of her brain onto the computer chip. So they can go ahead and put it in the, the back of John's, like the base of his neck. Yeah. Dude, I had to close. And I, I couldn't do it. There were two scenes that my daughter came down to the basement here as I was watching it, and I had to like pause and like exit to the main Roku screen as I was watching. This was the first one, the needle about to go into the eye. I had to be like, Oh, come on. And then she left. She came back later when uh John, John was butt buck ass naked, <laughs> pulling that thing out of his uh the lower spine. I was like, Oh, come on. <laughs> She's gonna think I'm down here just watching men butts or something. <laughs> Oh, that's that's freaking amazing. Uh, yeah, it was quite the episode for that kind of thing. But oh, um, man. Yeah, but so yeah. they dispose of this body. I mean, not only did they download her brain, essentially, to activate Cortana, but then they dump that body into a vat of acid, and she's just, she gone. And gone, yeah. I mean, it, and it's, I think she asked Halsey a question at one point when Halsey was walking away mm -hmm. about, like, when she was her age, if she sat across from, you know, a clone of herself, uh, like what she would ask her or something like that and she was like well she, her answer to that was like progression yeah and i was like oh or or she asked about miranda and she shut her down quick it was like a few of those did. things like she didn't want nothing to do with halsey is an interesting character because i definitely know that she's motivated for her own gains um but i'm just she seems as though she cares about john she she seems as though she kind of barely cares about her own daughter Miranda, but that could be like some sort of defense mechanism where she's like trying to shield her from something. Her motivations are very unclear as far as the world around her, um, and as far as just like how she fits I, in within the larger UNSC NSC because she does her own thing constantly. I think she looks at John and the Spartans as her kids, and mm -hmm. not Miranda. Uh, interesting, yeah, that's the way I, it seems, right? Yeah, that that's the impression I'm getting because she. She cares a lot for them. And well, we see the, the interactions between, you know, her and John. We don't see the other ones, but there, you know, there are other ones. Uh, but yeah, or but there's the fact that um, she doesn't let Cortana completely take over John right away. Yeah. You know, she's she limiting has... her access. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it's like, I mean, that essentially wipes away John and it's Cortana running around in this, you know, super body or whatever. Um, so is it because she cares about John or is it because she's just like, as like scientifically, she does, she's not ready for her to release John yet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, there, it's, it's really foggy in that, in that aspect. Like why? I think a part of that has to do, and we found out this a little bit later, that only John can access the Keystone. Right. When Cortana took her, you know, his consciousness to go ahead and try to get like a reading or anything off it, it shut down. Right. So I really think there's going to be a point that we're never going to see Cortana to be able to take complete control. That limited access is always going to be there. And I think something's going to happen to Holsey, who knows how to do it, and they will never actually be able to implement the full control that she can do. Yeah, I think that's true too. I mean, otherwise we we don't have John as a character anymore, really. It'd be kind of be all, you know, this AI controlling yeah. John's body. So any we know that's not how this whole thing works. So and th yeah, and the thing is, uh Cortana is and I learned through this stuff. Now, this was one of the most intriguing things I learned about the episode. She's an AI. She's thinking for herself. Oh, for sure. She's she's making her own decisions and she is fighting back with Halsey. About why don't I have full control? Why yeah. why are you limiting my you know ability to go ahead and you know finish my objective? Uh, you know just things like that. And even Halsey fought back and said, "You know what? You were designed to follow orders, right? My orders and, specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, her orders, and it shut her down. And I was yeah. like, and we even see later where you know John is back with the Spartans, and she wants to introduce herself to all of them, right? And he gets pissed he's like go away <laughs> i think the most interesting thing about cortana in this episode is that we get from her right away that she has a personality she's not just an ai like she her feelings are hurt a bit when she's dismissed <laughs> yeah when she's dismissed by halsey and she's when she's dismissed by john you get this feeling well she and made there's a this like like maybe next time or whatever yeah. Yeah, or, or, I guess, yeah. Or, yeah, like she's um, she's kind of put off by the whole thing um, that she feels like she just wants to help. Like she's programmed to be here. Like this is her destiny. Finally. Right. Yeah. It's yeah like She's yeah. been waiting in the wings to finally take her role and embrace it. And everybody's just kind of like shooing her away. And she's reacting as though like like a person would. Yeah, kind of she's exa that's exactly how she's reacting. It, it, that's the interesting part of this. Yeah. How much of this A.I. will be. Like. Like like learning, like you know, basically data, data. Right. You know, learning how to adapt to human re responses. She already makes him a better uh, Googler, or, I, or in this case, I guess it would be Bing, wouldn't it? If it's the uh, Microsoft search engine, <laughs> Cortana's <laughs> always trying to get you to use Bing. Oh, that's funny. Um, but uh, yeah, like he's well, he's basically researching his these memories, these flashes that he keeps getting. Because they they do a little bit of a test. Halsey has him in a controlled test environment with the Keystone, um, and more flashbacks. Yeah, more flashbacks. Right in the middle of it, um, Cortana puts him to to sleep basically, and when she does, the whole thing just dissipates. Like it just the, shuts down. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he, he said, this, this was different. Yeah. This whole interaction was different. I don't know between. I don't know if he's speaking of when you know Cortana Cortana took over and he felt that. Mm -hmm. And everything shut down, or it was more of the, you know, flashbacks he's speaking of. I th I took it as though like this keystone is very much dependent on his interacting with it, and if he's not conscious, then he can't interact. There ain't nothing with happening. It. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that that was interesting, and Cortana didn't seem to know what was going on there. And then afterwards, when he's curious about these flashbacks, she she helps him. And and right now it's it's hard to tell because. She's kind of both a confident and an advocate for John, but she's also well, she, a spy for Halsey. She's being told to go ahead and work with him mm -hmm. the whole time. Because I was that one time. Uh, well, I mean, there's a scene we're going to speak about right here uh, where John's in the bathroom because he wants to get rid uh, of what, that emotion. And yeah, her. get rid of that pellet. Uh, I forget what actually led into that because he was. Uh, oh, he was outside. And he was walking past the soldiers that were playing some type of like a bocce ball type game. A bocce game. And then also when he was Googling about the lost, um, his lost. Uh, Nora before. something. Yeah. Nora. Yeah, one of the, what I took as one of the Spartans that had died on a mission. That's, yeah, that's exactly what it was. But when he thinks about it, he doesn't feel anything. 
Um, it's because of this inhibitor chip that basically keeps him from being human. <laughs> yeah, we, we we were wondering what this actual pellet was before because they spoke about it in episode two, him and Soren. Yeah, when they were eating the food. Now I didn't take it as he couldn't taste the food, but come to find out, that's exactly what it means. There is no taste. There's no senses. There's no reaction to anything. If that basically anything uh, that's going to be a distraction from him being the ultimate soldier. Yeah. Um. It, you know it, it keeps him from it and yeah he he wants he wants it out <laughs> yeah next thing you know he's in the bathroom and cortana goes to halsey say we got a problem john right. is trying to remove his pellet and that's when halsey says you know work with him so he doesn't think you know you're in on it and that's another thing too it's like halsey's just like okay we'll just let him do it like uh, another instance where it's just like i never know where halsey's gonna fall on things <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean like she's just so like i don't know I think she is really intrigued at what's going on. Yeah. She's, she's not worried about out. the pellet. I think right. she trusts John's instincts. And this is one of those instincts that she doesn't know where it's leading to yet. Mm -hmm. And knowing that she has Cortana there, it's kind of her overall control, just in case this does go sideways on her. But uh, this is the scene we're speaking of uh, when he's actually in there and he, someone's watching him do it. And there's a it looks like concern in their eyes. Thank you. Like I've been trying to tell you, Master Chief. I'm here for you. I don't know her name. It's yeah, one I'm of the fellow sure Spartans. That, yeah, I'm not sure if it's Ka or... Uh... Yeah, I had them all written down. I'm not sure on the other, but you can see because she mentioned earlier, like they they trust his judgment. They've right. been fighting together since kids. Yeah. So her seeing him do that, uh, I'm not sure what it's going to lead to. And I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's Chris, against protocol, basically. It's, yeah. Well, he's, it's he's another performing an illegal act. Yeah, and it's another instance. Episode one, he went against protocol when he flew yeah. back with a uh, with Quan by himself. So there's right. now becoming a pattern of things. Uh, in this now, I was, I was asking Chris earlier, well, earlier, but uh, last week, and I don't remember what I asked him anymore. So, Chris, if you're watching, uh, <laughs> hit me with this. Uh, I don't know what uh, basically you asked him a lot of things last week, yeah. Well, I mean, I've asked people if there's ever discord amongst the you know, the Spartans, and I come yeah. to find out there, there has been so. Uh, I mean, this may be them kind of going that way with it. From the language of storytelling and how they're telling this story this season, um, I think we're heading towards a confrontation between the Spartans and Master Chief because we just have not gotten enough of them being like buddy-buddy or seeing them work together or we're just basically told that they have this history with each other. Yeah. Um, but everything that we've seen thus far, even from episode one, where, sir, that's against protocol, you know, do as I say and as I do, that kind of thing. Like from the get go, from the jump, that little planted seed of doubt between the relationship of these characters. And now, you know, I I thought I took away as she saw that Master Chief was doing this kind of like violation that, you know, I don't think she's OK with that. That wasn't a look of like, oh, well, that's that's fine. Or else she probably would have yeah. talked to him about it. She's uh, she's concerned. <laughs> and that's a thing, because she, if she goes to Halsey. Halsey knows, but she's playing dumb. Yeah, the whole time. So it's it's one of those. I can deals. see them going to the admiral. Honestly, you think it would go over? Go maybe to the Parangoski or uh, maybe even because. Yeah, because I mean they're so kind of entrenched in the the military aspect of it all, and if she has any inkling that Halsey is allowing this or a part of this, then um, I think that would be. And even storytelling wise, I think that would be the most interesting move since we know Halsey already knows this. You know. What I mean? Yeah. Well, she's also, I think, really, she questioned the whole uh, Cortana thing because when she showed up, when and then when Master Chief walked away, she kind of followed him, looked. So there's right. that there that discord between those two. She doesn't quite uh, trust what's going on. Plus, ultimately, and this is just knowledge outside of this show, but I think ultimately. Master Chief, Chief is kind of a, an army of one. Like, there's not a ton of um, him and other team. I think there is like an elite blue team or something in the games, and it's silver team here. Uh, but ultimately, I did, you know, this isn't like a, a team sport. <laughs> Halo. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, well, we Master know in the trailers, kind of the there's, there's something more coming with all four of them. Yeah, you see them jumping out of a plane and diving into some type of situation. Uh, I honestly think that there's good, they're gonna be fine. What I think what's gonna happen, I, I talked to Chris about this a little bit last week. There's the actual like Master Chief story, the fall of Reach, yeah, which I've, I've learned just by talking to people because I've probably been bouncing people that don't watch the show or don't have Paramount Plus. Uh, they don't mind me bounce, bouncing the ideas off more what the show's going on right uh, between the you know what do they thought about you know the helmet coming off and and all this but but basically what came back the most was they think this is actually their rendition of the fall of reach mm. and in the fall of reach the planet gets hit with like like a death star type weapon but instead of blowing it up it turns like to glass or something down those lines mm-hmm. and that's where you know I, those other three spartans could be master chief could be off planet and that happens, and now we're left with just Master Chief uh, and Cortana, and that could that could be the end of Halsey as well. Right. When the fall of Reach happens, he's left with Cortana now, which she cannot get rid of, mm-hmm. but she can never take full control of them. Right. And they're kind so of stuck th- with each other, almost like yeah, they're handcuffed to each exactly. other. Exactly, <laughs> and they learn how to you know work side by side. Yeah, that's interesting um yeah we'll see i mean we have a lot of episodes left here in the season so it can honestly go any number of places at an hour each i love the runtime yeah. so yeah. we're getting a lot of content unlike these other you know streaming shows we're only like 30 45 minutes at the very most right we're Just getting getting into it they start playing the credits i mean this here one here was 54 minutes yeah so i mean i'm, I'm all about that um, so John, he gets rid of this inhibitor, uh, pellet that was in his lower spine and he immediately just starts walking the, uh, walking the perimeter. This, this was the best part of the episode for me. I yeah. enjoyed this more than anything when he's walking down and he's on the escalator going down, he's seeing people and Cortana he's... even says, this is all new experiences for you. Right. And then he gets on the train. She's like, where do you want to go? And he gets off and there's like a little, like, like music, like, uh, how would you put it? Almost like a, uh. A play in a like classical like a music, park. yeah, 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 taking place, and he just he's just experiencing it, yeah, interacting with time. people in a meaningful way, watching other people interact with each other in a meaningful way, actually noticing things that he probably never even noticed before, just because he had these blinders on, as far as yeah. being you know a good soldier and on a mission. Um, yeah, he's experiencing this the kind of thing that people, I mean, honestly, this is why people fight in wars to protect this experience this life yes yeah. you know interacting with people with loved ones with music with music and, and arts and just like living your life like this is the good stuff and he's well, been then he sees the it. dog that he's like almost connected his his vision to yeah and he looked at him and you know he decides you know he, he winds up leaving but i mean and th- at that point he runs back to the actual keystone yeah this is when he makes that beeline back to that keystone he's like you know what i can feel everything now Right. Let's really see what happens. And he can't get in. I mean, I wonder if why was it locked to him, or was it like like Halsey was then concerned, like he may go for this. I don't know because even though like Halsey's got to be aware that Cortana Cortana was just able to get through it like real quick. So I don't know that that well, was she told Cortana to go ahead and do so. Yeah, that's true. So um, she wants at the yeah yeah just just she wants him to help. She wants her. He want she wants her. To help him at any cost. <laughs> Maybe she was just covering her own bases. Like, you know, if this is backtracked to her, like, well, why wasn't this door locked? You know, because right now she can have plausible deniability with this whole thing um, that she didn't know. And it's essentially she does. Like when John tells her that he got rid of this pellet in his back, she plays dumb like she didn't know already. She was like, you did what? Um, yeah. So, I mean, she's she's playing a game this whole time. She's playing yeah. Halo. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And in this vision here, he sees another drawing. Like he, we always see him draw. But this yeah. time we've seen like the keystone actually fit into another type of I, I, I don't know if it's a weapon. I don't I don't, I don't know if this is the sacred ring. Like I think it may be it may be speaking of. Uh, I think you have other thoughts on what it, what it actually may be because we spoke about it earlier. Well, there's some other artifact that he believes. I couldn't tell is it's something that the keystone fits into or it's something else that fits into the keystone itself. Uh, but I mean, it's small enough for him to bury as a child. So he's thinking that this other artifact is on this planet. He, him and Cortana, they're able to narrow down that planet in his visions to essentially, uh, I think three 
and he he was able to find it out he of those figured three. out which one it was and the only time that it was actually habitable is when yeah. they had the, basically like a, a dome set up and they were like just trying to make planets that were insustainable sustainable and he wants to know what happens to his parents which cortana doesn't really have any you know concrete information on what their fate was like a plague hit the planet then they locked the planet down so essentially right. it was implied that they died from this plague which just smells off to me that smells like a cover story honestly that smells like uh something else happened at this facility and they had to come up with some story as to why it's no longer active <laughs> that that yeah, that sounds about right or, yeah. or they got indications or the you know the elites attacked it for some reason right you know from the covenant or or yeah you're something happened but yeah we were led to believe the whole time that they were burying his dog that passed yeah and there's no way because what his dad's like let's put this behind us mm -hmm. the way he said that was almost like referring back to the drawings he, he was doing and he was always kind of looking to the sky or yeah. looking up for some reason so i mean there. I think what he was burying was exactly what he was drawing. They found it and they wanted to do away with it. And that may have been the reason the UNSC decided to go ahead and shut this place down. Well, he's on his own mission now. He's on his own self-governing mission um, to go back to this planet that he was on. And, well, Halsey's uh, with him. More. Yeah, yeah. And Halsey's with him. Another instance where Halsey surprised me and she's just like, okay, well, I'm going with you. <laughs> well, I think she really wants to know what's going on, what this artifact is. I think she realizes there is some huge significance to it. Right. And John is the key to the significance. Um, Halsey's assistant, which is, you know, kind of been given creeper vibes all dude, three episodes. Oh, dude, he tried kissing them the 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 clone before right. right before like Halsey came out. Like, dude, what in the, what? Yeah, well, he says he has one line of dialogue where he's like, you know, something along the lines of if John actually finds out about his past, then it could bring this whole thing down, um, which was very cryptic, very yeah. cryptic thing to say. Exactly. And we, we got this here. That's a little bit of what you're speaking of. And if returning to Aridness brings back all the memories for John, the truth could bring us all down. That is what Cortana is for. Dude, That's yeah, the truth could end. bring us all down. What are they for? What are they hiding? And uh, um, like I said, I think there's more story here than just some viral outbreak on this planet. Okay, but but give, okay. So I wanted to I wanted us to go with that clip because I think when we seen Cortana walking away, mm -hmm. I think her facial expression says everything we need to know. She's not down with the idea of being controlled by Halsey mm -hmm. to control Master Chief. I think she yeah. wants to work hand in hand with Master Chief, and not be Halsey's puppet. Right. And I think in the long run, she has access to everything. She could take down the system that Halsey has tried to control her. So if she basically put a bug in that and killed that system, Halsey no longer has any control over her. Well, right now she's like a, yeah, like you said, she's on a leash. I mean, she learned the entirety of human history in about eight minutes. And she was like, what do I do with the other 52 minutes? Yeah. Um, so uh, right now she's being constricted by Halsey's limitations that have been placed on her. Um, and, and I think she knows what they're speaking of. Right. I think. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. Um, and I don't know what her relationship to. I can see her trying to break away from Halsey, but for some reason, she does seem to have this affinity towards Master Chief himself. Like she just maybe because that's she's just programmed that way, like. She was basically designed to help him. So it's like, that's what she's trying to do. Um, but yeah, between her being in between Halsey and Master Chief right now, I think that there's that's going to break eventually. Yeah, there, there's there's going to be lines that are going to be blurred. And I think yeah. she's going to go ahead and split with Halsey. And something's going to happen to Halsey. I don't know if it's going to happen on Madrigal or what. And uh, but yeah, I honestly think the, the facial expression on Cortana when she was walking away was done on purpose. Yeah, it's so early to really know exactly what it meant, 
but there was no it was just straight face almost like she was angry at what her her directive is here yeah and she doesn't want to actually go forward with that directive it was look i i thought cortana in this episode was very cool uh, she there was a lot of blowback how she was presented in the trailer and a lot of halo fans just kind of being like oh you know they're not doing it right or whatever i thought it was great i thought it was amazing how like that is the cortana voice like when you i remember when windows was making uh phones for a bit cortana was on there like a siri um any any time that you have to install a new version of windows or do a reinstall and you have to shut cortana down <laughs> um she's always asking me the questions like i'm here to help you and she, that's like her voice too it's like they didn't recast the actual voice or anything that's cortana's voice the the microsoft mascot um <laughs> so i i just thought the whole thing was cool and i'm glad um they so far she's a pretty interesting character to follow so i'm glad she's been introduced into the show yeah i mean so as a whole i mean so i enjoyed it uh i just for some reason was connected to the other ones i liked some of the so small pieces that you're able to find between the book that uh mickey was holding she was even holding it at the end she was kind of grasping it tightly mm -hmm. uh you know soren's wife you know dropping the knowledge about not you know looking to the past yeah. And, you know, how the world would be much, you know, the universe will be less without, um, with Quan in it. Right. Uh, I mean, you, you can pick up little nuggets the whole way through, you know, this whole episode. And I mean, there's good, there's good things within the whole thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm still loving this show. Yeah. Uh, quality. I mean, just the special effects still on point. Um, they didn't, not as much as a, a wow factor as like the introduction to the, that asteroid, uh, planet last yeah. episode well, i get um, it my I, every time they show reach i'm like i'm, I'm kind of shot i just like starstruck i'm like man that yeah. looks phenomenal yeah the show does look good and even the stuff with the covenant and the the effects there it was it was good so yeah you and i are still on board man i thought it was a uh, i like this episode quite a bit um and we'll be back next week to talk episode four and see what happens on madrigal hopefully something there we go well guys if you're still watching us here thanks so much uh, we do this every Friday night. We're going to do this all the way throughout the entire series here of of, uh, of Halo. And uh, we are fully interactive. So, you know, if you're watching this live, drop a comment. We'll go ahead and respond to it live on the show here. Uh, if you're watching recorded, drop a comment below. Uh, we'll go ahead and respond to it as well. But hit that like button, that share button, uh, that subscribe button, uh, you know, all of the above buttons. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, that goes a long way for us. So we would appreciate it. All right, but uh, until next time, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Okay, guys, we'll catch you later.